let me also urge them to continue to support our efforts in developing the Niger Basin. President Buhari advocates increased global action on development of Niger Basin area. This program will bridge the gap between the skills and capabilities of recent graduates. New national program on skills enhancement to benefit thousands of young Nigerians. Nigeria is not a failed state and will not be a failed state. Information Minister Lai Mohammed condemns assertion on Nigeria by US-based group, describes statement as opinions of private entities and not of the United States. Retirement is only on voluntary basis for senior officers. Plus, Army clears the air on rumored mass retirement. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. I'm Cyril Stober in Abuja. Adiola Komiakere is in Lagos, while Jenny Bassi joins me from Port Harcourt. President Muhammad Buhari has called for global support towards an accelerated development of resources in the Niger Basin area. He emphasized that the move becomes more imperative in view of the fact that 160 million people depend on the river as a means of sustenance. The president was declaring open the 12th summit of heads of state and government of the Niger Basin Authority. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports. The 12th summit of the heads of state and government of the Niger Basin Authority was convened to, amongst others, review and adopt the report of the extraordinary session of the Council of Ministers, appoint new chairman as well as executive secretary of the NBA. President Muhammad Buhari, who is the outgoing chairman, said the Niger River, commonly called Joliba in Guinea and Mali, offers enormous development opportunities in the fields of agriculture, animal husbandry, fish farming, hydropower, and navigation. It is therefore necessary to continue to promote its enormous potential for the benefit of our people and to improve the social economic development of the region. The Nigerian leader expressed appreciation to technical and financial partners, including the African Development Bank, the Global Environment Fund, and the German Financial Cooperation for identifying with the vision and projects of the authority. Let me also urge them to continue to support our efforts in developing the Niger Basin in the fight against pollution and the degradation of ecosystems in order to manage the resources of the Niger Basin in a sustainable and equitable manner. President Buhari used the opportunity to give account of his five-year stewardship piloting the affairs of the institution, saying out of the several decisions taken at the summit, only the one on funding the operational plan of the authority 2016 to 2024 that is yet to be fully implemented. He listed other ongoing programs to include the integrated development and adaptation to climate change in the Niger Basin towards improving the resilience of the Niger River ecosystems and populations through a sustainable management of natural resources. It should be noted to our collective delight that these achievements were only possible with your active support. The chairman, NBA Council of Ministers and Nigeria's Water Resources Minister, Suleiman Adamu, said the authority has the mandate of, amongst others, managing the Niger Basin ecosystem, enhancing the development of the basin's shared resources in an equitable manner and avoiding transboundary water resources conflict for the betterment of the populace. I'm confident that the decisions reached at this summit will further actualize the dreams of our founding fathers and improve the socio-economic development of our region. Several heads of state and government of the Niger Basin Authority member nations participated in the virtual summit. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. Meanwhile, the 12th summit of the heads of state and government of the Niger Basin Authority has ended with the appointment of President Mark Christian Kabori of Burkina Faso as new chairman. This is contained in a 10-point communique issued by participants after the one-day virtual engagement anchored from the State House, Abuja.
The chairman, Council of Ministers of the Authority and Minister of Water Resources, Suleiman Adamu, read the communique. Following the review of the report of the Council of Ministers, the heads of state and government took decisions on the following. One, the construction of the NBA headquarters. Two, the implementation of the operational plan. And they nominated His Excellency Mohamed Bazoum, the President of Republic of Niger, to conduct advocacy with his peers for the payment of their share for the construction of the NBA headquarters. The new chairman of the authority and president of Burkina Faso, Christian Kabore, is taking over from President Buhari for a period of two years. The appointment of the new executive secretary was, however, deferred for another session to be convened by the new chairman. President Buhari congratulated President Kabore on his appointment, which he described as a demonstration of utmost confidence in his ability by member states. Summit is a significant milestone in the implementation of our mandate to strengthen the effectiveness and efficiency of the authority. I want to congratulate all of us for a job well done and call on each of us to continue to master the needed political will and courage to implement the parish decisions we took today. Governor Ben Ayari of Cross River State has been speaking about the reasons for his defection from the PDP to the governing APC, describing President Muhammad Buhari's sincere commitment to Nigeria as the major attraction. Governor Ayari stated this while at a media briefing after an audience with the President. State House correspondent Adam Usambu reports that the Kogi State Governor Yahya Bellu also came calling. A warm welcome by President Muhammad Buhari to Governor Ben Ayadi of Cross River State. This is their first formal engagement since the governor's defection to the governing APC. Details of their discussions held behind closed doors were not disclosed. Governor Ayadi, however, told newsmen shortly after that President Muhammad Vice President Yemi Oshibajo says the federal government is resolute in its determination to make the needed difference and rebuild the confidence of young Nigerians. The Vice President said this when announcing a new graduate skill enhancement program tagged Nigeria Jubilee Fellows in Abuja. State House correspondent Jidi Unifadi reports. The Nigeria Jubilee Fellows program jointly initiated by the Office of the Vice President and the United Nations is the latest in a long line of large-scale efforts and initiatives by the Buhari administration to comprehensively address the youth unemployment challenge in Nigeria. The quality of implementation, as Vice President Yemi Oshimbaje says, will be the key to the success of the program. So I believe that this program will bridge the gap between the skills and capabilities of recent graduates and uh, the human resource demands of the, of the labor market connecting graduates with opportunities to earn as they learn and to gain uh, required experience. I urge the private sector leaders who are present here and captains of industry uh, and our development partners and the diplomatic community to support this program uh, aimed at equipping young Nigerians with skills and experience required for uh, the workplace of the 21st century. The great talent of Nigerian youths has not been well harnessed, says Mohamed Yaya, resident representative of United Nations Development Program, which he says calls for the need to provide them with skills and get linked up with industry where they are needed. COVID-19 has disrupted the way work is done and the manner which we access jobs. And most importantly, skill sets required to survive the new normal of the labor market. The Jubilee Fellows Program addresses these challenges by building a pipeline of talent that is future ready. Through the program, young Nigerians will access skills that will help them navigate an evolving job market. By creating channels between graduates and companies, the program will identify the emerging skills that the companies need while equipping graduates to make impactful 
President Muhammad Bari is scheduled to launch the takeoff of the program in a few weeks' time. In Abuja, Jude Onifade, NT News. And returning to Governor Ayadi's visit to the State House, and wherein he spoke about his reasons for defecting from the PDP to the governing APC. Let's return to Adamu Sambu for more on that report, as well as uh, the visit of uh, Governor Yahya Bellu of Kugi State to the President. Welcome, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Sir. Welcome in two ways. <laughs> welcome to <laughs> A warm welcome by President Muhammad Buhari to Governor Ben Ayadi of Cross River State. This is their first formal engagement since the governor's defection to the governing APC. Details of their discussions held behind closed doors were not disclosed. Governor Ayadi, however, told newsmen shortly after that President Muhammad Buhari is the reason for his decision to abandon the party that brought him to power. I have watched him and have related closely with him. I have traveled with him overseas severally and I find honesty, integrity, character, decency in him. Yeah, and I see his wish and commitment to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So to that extent, I have a leader that I trust. Moving to the center and supporting the president is to reduce the threat to the national unity that we have. We have. If Nigeria fails, Africa will fail. The governor condemned in strong terms the way and manner members of the opposition parties in Nigeria rejoice over the challenges bedeviling the country, describing it as bad politics. You rejoice over the bloodbath in your country. You rejoice over the level of insurgency and killings in your country just because you are playing opposition. And the cascading downstream effect is that your country will become ungovernable over a course of time. And you might have a civil war, you might have a civil strife that will be beyond the current capacity of the state. And once that happens, you have no guarantee that the next bomb or the next attack will not be you or me. So what do we need to do to lower that temperature? We need to come together and support Mr. President to bring value and create a prosperity agenda for Nigeria. And the ruling party is saying, my doors are open. Governor Yahya Bello of Kogi State was also granted audience by the president where issues of security as well as economic development in respect of the confluence state were discussed. I use the opportunity to appreciate Mr. President for what he has been doing for, the, for us in this country in keeping us together and ensuring that Nigeria remain united. And I equally assure Mr. President of our own continued support and effort in making sure that Kogi State being the gateway between the North and South, we continue to hold forth and ensure that the center Holds. Mr. President is very pleased with our achievement and successes so far in Kogi State and uh, he urged me and the rest of us to do more. Governor Yahya Bello used the opportunity to assure those urging him to run for the presidency that he will give them what he called a resounding response when the time comes. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed says the declaration of Nigeria as a failed state by the U.S.-based organization Council on Foreign Relations is an individual's opinion and not that of the U.S. government. The minister stated this during an interactive session with members of the Federal Minister of Information and Culture Press Corps. Anthony Forsen reports. The declaration of Nigeria as a failed state by the Council on Foreign Relations, a United States-based organization in the words of the Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed, is the shared opinion of two people. The facts on ground do not point to Nigeria as being a failed state. So yes, we have security challenges which we are trying very hard to contain. Is there any country in the world that does not have its own security challenges? Absolutely. Look, I want to make it clear once again, Nigeria is not a failed state and will not be a failed state. 
Lai Mohamed pointed out that even though the Council on Foreign Relations is a prominent U.S.-based policy think tank, it cannot lord its opinion on nations. As important and as powerful and influential as the Council on Foreign Relations, which uh, Mr. John Campbell, on which he serves, or the World uh, Peace Foundation, which Mr. Robert Rodberg, you know, was his president emeritus, that is their own personal opinion. It's their personal opinions. It's neither the opinion of the U.S. government or any other person. The minister recalled that this is not the first time Nigeria is being called a failed state or a state about to fail with specific deadline. Therefore, Nigerians should disregard such negative predictions about Nigeria. In Abuja, Anthony Forsen, NTA News. Time to take a break for some messages. The news returns in just a moment. Thanks for staying with us. The House of Representatives Committee on National Security and Intelligence says suggestions articulated by stakeholders at the Summit on National Security were phenomenal and that work on the various presentations is on course for consideration and onward submission to the President. National Assembly Correspondent Lami Ali reports. The week-long summit organized by the House Special Committee on National Security was a platform of discourse with key stakeholders to X-ray and profile solutions to the multi-dimensional security challenge in the country. It was no surprise, therefore, that over a thousand inputs were received. The Chairman House Committee on National Security and Intelligence, Representative Shaban Sharada, says the summit, which came on the heels of the tragic death of a chief of army staff and others in a plane crash, is in honor of their memory. We have engaged in a vigorous exchange of ideas and implementation of the updated House legislative agenda with a particular intention of developing solutions to the serious security challenges in Nigeria. He reassured Nigerians that the House remains committed to the joint task of securing the nation. Lami Ali, NT News. The Defence Headquarters has cleared the air on alleged pending mass retirement of senior military officers sequel to the recent appointment of Major General Farouk Yahya of Corps 37 as the Chief of Army Staff. The Acting Director of Defence Information, Brigadier General Bernard Onyuko, made the clarification at a news conference on periodic operational update on ongoing armed forces operations across the country. Retirement is only on voluntary basis for senior officers who desire to do so. At this point in time, no retirement has been authorized by the military high command. In another development, the Kano State Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduji was at the defense headquarters to show solidarity with the military for its operations in the state and appeal for further actions within the Falgori forest that he says continues to harbor criminals. The situation in Kano and look for further synergy with the security operatives in Kano so that we keep Kano in peace and safe. Governor Ganduji also condoled with the armed forces over the death of the late Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Atahiru and others. Staying with the military, the Nigerian Army troops and the air component of Operation Hadden Kai have inflicted heavy casualty on Islamic State West Africa Province Iswap terrorists who launched a futile attack on Damboa local government area of Borno State. A statement by the Director of Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Mohamed Yarima, says the troops successfully defeated the invaders, destroyed their locally fabricated armored plated vehicles, and killed over 50 Iswap terrorists even as the Nigerian Air Force intensified attack from the air, forcing the rest to disintegrate in disarray. The Chief of Army Staff, Major General Farouk Yahya, congratulated the troops, including the air component, for this great achievement. Aside the frequent cases of boat mishaps in the nation's inland waterways, maritime crime is another area of worry 
And the Nigeria police says it is rising up to the occasion by deploying maritime police to ensure safer passage for watercraft and passengers. Francis Form reports that a meeting between the acting IGP and the leadership of the National Inland Waterways also agreed to ensure that passengers are kitted with personal flotation devices before boarding. High traffic on the road. The roads are overstretched. The ports are congested. But the waterways, the next option, is not safe. But if our waterways are all year round navigable, channels are open, what that means is that we'll remove one million trail, two million trailers from the road. And we now save our road infrastructure, we we'll reduce the pressure and uh, uh, make cargo movement a lot cheaper. Sea pirates turn passengers on the waterways, they are praise. Newa seeks for solution. Police willing to help. Maritime crime will be gradually wiped out on the water surfaces. We will synergize, collaborate and uh, work with you. Uh, we will support you in driving whatever things you want to do to improve uh, what you have made in that place. Partnership expected to deliver economic prosperity in inland waterways subsector. Francis from NTA News. And Nigerians have continued to express a desire for the amendment of the nation's constitution to meet current realities and the collective aspirations of the people. These views are reflected at the national public hearings organized by the Senate Committee on the Review of the 1999 Constitution. John Yaku has details. The public hearing on the review of the Constitution is seeking the fifth alteration of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Top on the 16-point agenda at the hearing are gender equality, fiscal federalism, residency and indigenship, states and local governments creation, state police and the role of traditional rulers in governance, among others. And they cannot disarm traditional rulers and expect them to perform. Traditional rulers in Nigeria are very close to the people and we are supposed to understand their feelings and their aspirations. It is important that the constitution is reviewed to provide for at least 35% women representation in appointed offices. A lone voice, however, called for amendments that will make the necessary alteration to allow for a complete change of the constitution. If we change a brand new constitution, will it change Nigerians? Will it bring totally new population in Nigeria? No, it is see the same people that were operated. And so what I think is that we should be talking about change of attitude. President of the Senate and Chairman Senate Committee on the Review of the 1999 Constitution thanked Nigerians for their turnout both at the zona and national public hearings, promising that their views and memoranda which reflect the will of Nigeria will be upheld. While we have identified certain items as thematic areas, we are still open to engagement on any other relevant proposal and we look forward to continuing discussions with the stakeholders on all proposals in that regard. The committee had conducted public hearings across the six geopolitical zones in Abuja, John Yaku. NTA News. In the meantime, the Senate leadership has confirmed it would accelerate the constitution review process and accommodate all submissions collated from its public hearings held at the zones. Deputy President of the Senate, Ovi Omagege, gave the assurance earlier today while speaking with NTA on the pace of the ongoing constitution review. I understand the national public hearing is holding between today and tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, actually, we began uh, the zona hearings uh, on uh, Wednesday and Thursday of last week, that's 26th and 27th uh, uh, of last month. Uh, we decided to uh, begin at the zona level to gauge the feelings, to receive the inputs of uh, people uh, at the states, the grassroots. Uh, we've succeeded in doing that. We did that for two days all across uh, the country. Uh, we've uh, uh, now determined to conclude uh, the exercise here at the national level. We started today uh, and we'll be concluding tomorrow. How responsive will you say the memoranda you've received have been? Actually, it's been overwhelming. Uh, beginning at the zona level, uh, frankly, we had difficulty actually entertaining uh, uh, all of the requests and the responses. Uh, the, memo the memoranda submitted by uh, 
uh, the stakeholders, uh, the areas we've zeroed in on this time. There uh, are so many uh, to accommodate uh, the views of uh, so many who are agitating, you know, uh, for almost a brand new constitution. In view of the security challenge that we have nationwide, what would you say it's been the body language where the issue of uh, police and community policing is concerned? Uh, not, only am I, not only am I a presiding officer of the Senate, yeah. I'm also the chairman of this committee, so uh, I do not have a position, you know, on any of these uh, issues yet. You know, at, at least until we get to plenary, when the votes will be taken. Okay. Uh, but uh, I can tell you uh, for free that uh, in all of the centers, you know, there's, uh, the case has been made, you know, uh, memoranda has been submitted uh, for and against. Yeah. At the end of the day, each of us will have only one vote to cast. Yeah. It's about votes. That's what it all comes down to. And we expect that everyone should go back home. We are senators, we represent people. Uh, uh, those who want me to cast a vote in favor of that, they should reach out to me for my constituency, just like they should be reaching out to everyone else. Let's now link up with Adiola Komiakiri in Lagos for more reports. Adiola. Thank you, Cyril. Now, more contributions and submission of memoranda on states' creation, local government autonomy, and call for new constitution dominated proceedings as the Constitutional Review public hearing organized by the House of Representatives ended in Lagos. Musa Toliat has details. Although the attendance on the last day of the public hearing on constitutional review was few, more presentations and submissions were made by participants at the gathering. Position papers were presented by organizations and individuals seeking creation of local governments and issues surrounding local government autonomy. And we need to transit from the level of potentiality to reality. And we can only achieve this through a new constitution for this country. Section 8C, which requires local government when they are created to be taken to Abuja, for confirmation should be removed. Other issues presented border on the need to repeal the Land Use Act, removal of the immunity clause to make erring political office holders accountable, political reforms to encourage youth participation in politics, gender-based concerns, and Child Rights Act. The Land Use Act has been 43 years old. Now, if it is not taken out of the Constitution, the method of amendment will be very, very difficult. You have already enacted the Child's Right Act, but we are going to appeal that this law should be amended to make it applicable all over the country. We want the evolution of power. Give power back to the states. If you have many women in, the, in governance, definitely it's going to you know, help the um, economy to move on. We have all their documents they've submitted, which we are going to take back home and of course we are going to make sure that we capture everything. Papers were presented by professional bodies, social cultural groups, traders association and faith based organizations. In Lagos, Musa Tonya, NTA News. Now, the alleged threat to invade a labor market by an anonymous voice note circulating on social media has cast restlessness among traders of the electronics market. Leaving nothing to chance, the Lagos State Police Command and the leadership of the market met in Lagos to dialogue towards securing the sport. Lynn Lenneke has the details. In this hall are merchandise of various kinds of products ranging from auto spare parts, electronics and phones among others drawn from markets across the metropolis. The meeting is on the instance of a voice note that went viral threatening Alaba International Market traders resulting from the insecurities being experienced in some parts of the country. In allaying their fears, Lagos State Commissioner of Police Hakim Udumosu described the alleged threat as fake alarm, capable of inciting the populace and destroying the unity of the state. So many times we had that on social media, and we have two technology brought in the view that are giving all this out, arrested, persecuted. The same thing on this one, and not only police, security agencies were in synergy on this. The interactive session dwells largely on fostering security and unity of the country, with a call to all as sundry to eschew all forms of violence.
You cannot have that type of message and hide it for the security purpose. And as we are coming here today, we have more, have more assurance from the Commission of Police that they are there with us, that they are, anytime that we call, call them, they will, they, they will answer us. Today we have learned how to differentiate the visitors from strangers. So we will keep our eyes open. I'm going to tell my people that security is not only for police, but everybody's affairs. The Commissioner of Police, Hakim Udumusu, hinted that the command will embark on a show of force to send warning to perpetrators of unrest while tackling any form of insecurity in the state. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. The news will continue. We're back in Abuja. Benny and Business begins right now. Benny? Thank you, Sil, and welcome to Business. The federal government has assured United Kingdom companies operating in Nigeria of its support in ensuring that they thrive even in the face of dwindling foreign exchange earnings, promising to continue creating the enabling environment for them to carry out their businesses unhindered. This is coming on the heels of requests for more foreign exchange for companies to pay their lenders, maintain machines, and continue in business. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment at Deni Adebayo and the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefele, had an interactive session with UK business team in Abuja on Thursday and noted that the government was doing everything to ensure investors in the Nigerian economy get the necessary support to grow their companies. Adebayo noted that the growth of these companies would mean more money for the government to build more infrastructure and also create jobs for the team in Nigerian youth. It is my belief that a continuous collaboration of this type between the Central Bank of Nigeria and my ministry will bring about tremendous changes in the Nigerian business environment that will impact positively on the economy of our great nation. Around the capital market, investors gain 34.25 billion naira as NGX All Share Index inches up by 0.17%, maintains positive posture. Equities close at 38,548.24 basis points, as against 0.18% appreciation recorded previously. Market breadth close positive as UPL led 19 gainers, as against 16 losers, topped by CWG, just as market turnover closed positive. Sovereignance, Zenit Bank and FCMB were the most active to boost market turnover, while Zenit Bank and Stambik topped market value this. Well, that is Business News. Cyril, it's over to you. Thank you, Benny. The Minister of Health, Dr. Osagie Haniri, says significant reduction in the number of coronavirus cases notwithstanding, Nigerians should not jettison adherence to stipulated non-pharmaceutical interventions put in place against the pandemic. The minister gave the advice at the weekly ministerial press briefing organized by the presidential communication team. State House correspondent Adam Sambu has the details. Invited to the briefing for the second time in three months, the Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Ihaneri, was emphatic that Nigeria is not yet out of the woods as far as the global pandemic is concerned. He said all the measures needed towards keeping the country and her citizens safe will continue. Even what is happening in India is an example of what we want to avoid. We want to be proactive, we want to be preemptive. Preemptive means that you want to do everything you can to make sure that it doesn't get here. And if it gets here, everything you can to halt it at any level, that uh, rudimentary level, so that it doesn't threaten uh, citizens. Dr. Osage Ihanere also spoke on efforts at acquiring more COVID-19 vaccines for the country. The access to vaccine has been very limited because there are countries that give us uh, vaccines, but who at the moment have only promised to deliver Many months from now, they want to take care of their own needs first, their own citizens and their immediate environment. COVAX wants to give us enough vaccines to vaccinate 20% of our population. But we have the target of vaccinating 70%. We think it is good to have our own capability to uh, produce vaccines, uh, perhaps under license, 
Meanwhile, the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency has announced the resolve by the federal government to effectively collaborate with religious and traditional leaders towards convincing more citizens to take the COVID-19 vaccine. These are from lessons that we've learned that uh, it is only when there's community ownership that people uh, will accept vaccines. These vaccines are safe, they are well tested and they are effective. We are not out of the woods from this particular outbreak. So we have to keep pushing to make sure that we sustain the small gains that we've had and make sure we're prepared for the future. At the briefing, the health experts, however, confirmed that there have been mild cases of side effects from those who have taken the COVID-19 vaccine. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Wike inaugurates quarters for judges of National Industrial Court. This comes from Port Harcourt with Jenny Bassey presenting. Jenny. Thank you, Cyril. Good evening and welcome. The Chief Judge of Nigeria, Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed, has described Governor Yeson Wike as a shining example of political leaders who have the interest and wealth of the Nigerian judiciary at heart, both in words and action. Justice Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed, represented by Justice Mary Odili, was speaking during the inauguration of the National Industrial Court Judges Quarters constructed by the River State Government. Ogedi Nyekwere reports. The inauguration of the state of the arts residential quarters for judges of the National Industrial Court in River State is one of the many interventions by the River State government for the federal judicial institutions to enhance the administration of justice in the state. Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ibrahim Tanko Muhammad, represented by Justice Mary Odile and the President, National Industrial Court of Nigeria, Justice Benedict Kanyem, noted that Governor Wike has remained a strong voice in the clamor for judicial independence. Well, sorry, um, we have to discontinue that link with the Port Harcourt Studios. But moving on with the rest of the news, for Nigeria to speedily win the war against all forms of insecurity, there must be a strong synergy between security agencies and the media. This is one of the outcomes of the 74th General Assembly of the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria, which took place in Abuja at Dibala Brooklyn Sunday reports. Nigeria is currently facing security challenges in all fronts, taking their rightful place as members of the fourth estate of the realm. These media chief executives choose to deliberate on insecurity and the way forward. Regulators harp on the need for professionals to always take into cognizance the ethical values of the pen profession and operating within the broadcasting code. Talk about the very different segmented issues that aggregate to build national development so that you create safety valves in terms of social opportunities, economic opportunities, political opportunities. Keynote speech of the Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Rabo, was delivered by Rear Admiral Okon Edet Ayo. Government and stakeholders must take advantage of the agenda setting and knowledge transmission function of the media for an enhanced information a national security architecture for Nigeria. Chairperson of the organization, Sir Ibrahim, said unity and progress of the nation is paramount to the association. Sometimes we are accused of not giving the general public um, adequate information, but there are some information that they are not meant to be for public consumption. You weigh them, you weigh the consequences of such information. NTA as a media, electronic media organization, is out specifically to build a nation. You can never find NTA carrying out distorted or misleading information that will scatter the country. Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria is the umbrella body for all broadcast outfits in the country. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. 
After recording a resounding success in the provision of online learning during the COVID-19 pandemic restrictions, Data Science Nigeria, Malaysia and Mastercard Foundation have rolled out another learning platform which puts equal learning and education opportunities in rural and urban communities on the table. The initiative which allows users to log on to www.learnathome.radio is set to reach more than 100 million students across the country. Abdullahi Mohammed reports. www.learnathome.radio is a platform packed with learning tools and aids that prepare students from primary four to SS3 in rural and urban communities to learn and succeed in examinations. The barriers of access to internet and cost of data totally eliminated here using a simple Edge or 2G phone to join audio classes while learning at individual pace from higher quality teachers and SMEs of learning materials in line with the NERDC curriculum. You just need to go to www.learnathome.radio and the amazing thing is that if you're on MTN Network, it's actually free to browse. Apart from the fact that the platform is free, it's free learning, it's free education, you can go on the platform, you can learn for free. More than 4 million students are already on the platform with convincing testimonies. My best subject on the platform is economics. The teachers have made it so easy and broken it down to the level that I can understand fully well. My experience with Learn at Home has been very, very fantabulous. I learned a lot of new things. Apart from availability of past solved question papers of examination bodies like WIEC, NACO, BECE and Common Entrance Examination, the site is free for MTN subscribers. We have a collection of past questions from as early as 2009 to 2020. Our teachers are taking time to take each question one after the other and provide the detailed explanation for the questions. The bodies driving the initiative say it is force of its kind with unlimited access riding on the national mobile phone penetration. In Abuja, Abdullah Mohammed, NT News. The media is again being put on notice to perform its responsibility as the watchdog of the society in a manner that promotes transparency and accountability in governance rather than engender anarchy, division and disintegration of the country. Kenneth Nanim reports that the need for objective reportage as a tool for combating the current spate of insecurity and other challenges being faced by the country was prioritized at an event to mark the 10th anniversary of Blueprint Newspaper, one of Nigeria's leading dailies. These headlines speak for the Blueprint Newspaper as a new generation media contributing to nation building. The proprietor, Mohammed Idris, is here. He tells the story on the roadmap charted on truthful journalism. We have practiced professional journalism, tightly mined our guests, contributed to useful conversations towards a more democratic and egalitarian society. President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, expressed faith in the unity of the country and urged the media to step up action through objective reportage towards solving Nigeria's socio-economic challenges. Our founding fathers were first to acknowledge our diversity. It is against this backdrop that I would challenge the media to affirm their faith in Nigeria and dedicate themselves to their role as the fourth extent of the realm. On the theme, which is technological innovation as antidote to election rigging, the representative of the INEC chairman, Chidi Wanfo, explained that INEC is set for online registration of voters and deployment of ICT. Technology is evolving and is therefore is important to move with the trend. In recognition of meritorious service by public office holders, former president Gulok Jonathan was awarded icon of democracy in Africa and some governors across the country in various capacities. The habit of making sure that candidates on our roads are reduced is being appreciated by all and sundry. The event also established the fact that the eyes of the public are on public officers, either for reprimand or for a part at the back for a job well done. <laughs> Kenneth Nani, NTN News. Sports now with Tamara Ibiwe.